This is a Blaring Out with Eric Blair show today with lead singer, guitarist, and founder of the heavy metal band Prong, as well as former member of Danzig and Ministry, Tommy Victor. Tommy Victor, you are blaring out with Eric Blair right now. I'm just so happy to be with you on this show. I really am. It's like you're an awesome guy. You got a great demeanor, and uh, I like the way you're coming from. Thank you, man. You're awesome. What was your family life like as a youth, and how did it shape you as a person? I was just talking to somebody the other day about that, how horrible my childhood was. Uh, as I get older in years and I see other people and how they've grown up and uh, the support system that they had, and uh, I had a very strange childhood. I was left alone a lot. Uh, I just uh, didn't really have any positive reinforcement in my life and I grew up in New York City and uh, was exposed to a lot of dangers and uh, I lived in fear a lot as a child and uh, and it between the Catholic school system and you know bullying on the street and uh, just uh, it was it was endless and it seems like I have the same pattern. It's like sort of playing in prong. You have this, you're getting beat up eternally. <laughs> so uh, it, it's, I think that's affected later on where, you know, I always feel like I need to struggle in some way. And uh, if I don't have that, uh, those challenges, uh, things are weird. It's like I never had any the, you know, the, the comforts. Uh, so how did you deal with that fear as a child? Well, that's how I sort of got into music. I mean, uh, it, it was the, the outlet of metal. I mean, early and, and you know, uh, early metal, which was like Deep Purple and Sabbath. I really identified with that. And uh, then I would hibernate and learn how to play. And I was playing bass back then. And uh, those records, like you know, like Sabbath, Buddy Sabbath, and Volume Four, and Machine Head, were like that was what I lived for. You know, it was like it was. Uh, and then eventually, like, you know, the, the, when punk rock started, too, like, you know, with the Stooges and Ramones and, uh, uh, you know, eventually, you know, the bigger, like, The Clash and uh, then New York Hardcore came around and, you know, I was just attracted to it. So uh, anything aggressive and dark and uh, yeah, it seemed to, re I could relate to that, you know, uh, you know and it was, uh, it kept me going. How did you find the discipline to go to audio school? What and what did you learn from that experience? Well, I had I had uh, some bad experiences in bands. Like I started getting into bands when I was really young, and then uh, you. By the time I was like 19, I, I felt like my career was over in music. Like so, I I, uh, uh, I was working as a bike messenger and uh, I supported myself through the Institute of Audio Research, and then uh, I got a job at CBGB where you know that was where you know prong started. So uh, you know, well, I just felt like I wanted to stay in music. I thought that I wasn't good enough to be in a band and to be a performer and to be a personality. And then, uh, so I took those steps and then, you know, uh, the art gods and the universe just threw me back into that when, after I achieved that as, a, as an audio guy at a club. And uh, it's just, you know, we don't have control over these things. So I certainly got, th I got thrown back into playing in a band. So, and then, you know, the rest I've been doing prong since then. How did Hilly Crystal treat you at CBGB's? You know, he, he, he was a very authoritative and uh, he, he was a commanding presence. The depictions of him in films, uh, etc., are completely wrong. I mean, uh, Hilly's best buddies were Hell's Angels and uh, he was a tough guy, a very tough guy. And uh, he was scary. And, uh, uh, Within that, within those type, and he was in the, he was in the Marines, uh, he, he, and so within that discipline and authority, he there was some fairness with him. So uh, I always had a lot of respect for him. What, what is what is one thing that you feel that he taught you during the time you were working there? Uh, I didn't really have the. He didn't really try to teach me everything. We, we, he he let people learn on their own. And then if they screwed up, they would receive the consequences on their own a lot. Uh, you know, he would bawl me out a lot of times. You know, this, you know, he, he thought that if I was mixing too loud or uh, he, he would uh, uh, critique my mixes. But I had a really big role at CBS too because, and people didn't know this, because I worked the audition nights for years and uh, I would 
actually approve the bands and or uh, you know you write them in this book and you, 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 your critique of the groups and we'd compare notes on that he'd always ask me he's like oh what did you think of these guys and I'd be like oh they sucked you know so um, you know I, I had that I had this big this badge on me all the time where you know uh, uh, it was authority of yeah. going like if these guys treat me like shit the bands then they're gonna get a bad review but sometimes they, the bands did treat me like shit or were abusive towards me and then I would give them a good review because they were good you know but sometimes you know uh, I you know I, I, I I would fool around with that a lot. I mean, it was a very hard job. There was a lot of bands. I worked like 12 hours a day. There was a lot of partying going on back then. You know, and that's the way the lifestyle was back then. You know, where you know no one thought about being sober and you know, like you know, I, I would go I, at the end of the night. I go, Hilly, can I borrow? Can I buy a bottle of vodka from you at four o'clock in the morning? He's like, Yeah, just give me three dollars. And you know, he was cool. You know, it was like it was a lot. It was definitely lower east side. Uh, uh, counterculture going on, uh, and that's completely disappeared in any anywhere I've gone. I've been touring a lot in the last ten years, and I don't see it anymore. I mean, it was a it was a beautiful thing in its own way. I mean, a lot of people destroyed their lives with it. I came out of it alive, but um, it, it was a it was a great period. And you know, I mean, I like that that the you know the music industry has given him you know the kudos he deserves definitely. How important is fame to you, and could you live without it? I don't know. I, I battle with that a lot of times, uh, you know, because I, you know, I try to search of like really where I'm coming from, and uh, you know, uh, I was talking to my manager the other day, and I was going, you go into the music business thinking that your your pride is going to be fed, and it just it's just the opposite. You're you you're, you're constantly run through a, a stream of humiliations all the time. It's it's it's. Uh, 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 you know, it's an ego buffering experience. I mean, uh, you, if you're going into the music business, we're trying to be in a band or whatever, thinking that you know you're 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 going to be propelled, uh, you, or you you know if you're a complete narcissist and you know that that's going to fulfill your needs, it's the wrong business to be in. Unless you're an overnight success, unless somebody has tons of money behind you to to you know to support that desire. So I, I really don't know. I mean, a lot of times it's it's a very self self-sacrificing thing for me a lot of times so uh, you know I, I think that uh, it, it's been a, a, a journey to uh, bring to, to bring my ego down in a lot of ways to wear it down because uh, you know it's it's a constant stream of uh, again I'm repeating myself of humiliations and of uh, ego puncturing and what advice would you give somebody contemplating suicide uh, this is going to sound kind of mystical, and people are going to probably hate me to about this, but um, you know, I think that throughout all kinds of self help books, anything you read, all religions, all concepts uh, for self help, and you know, even like Anthony Robbins and those guys will tell you somehow you have to uh, gain a relationship with like a higher power, whether that's you know, a guardian angel or uh, somebody, something else to look to, whether it's an imaginary friend, what have you, somebody to have some some spiritual connection or consulta consultation with. And I think if people don't really have that, then they resort to drugs and, you know, they, they do things to fulfill that hole. Uh, you have to have some sense of, and maintain uh, a relationship with, uh, whether you call it the, the, you, the universe or God or whatever. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any other way around that. What is your higher power? Uh, I like to refer to them as the art gods. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like I've been through a lot of hills and valleys in the, my, my career. So uh, they seem to... Uh, be in control of what's going on. Like I'll, I'll do, I'll make all the right moves, and I'll, I'll uh, you know, do everything that I think I'm supposed to be doing, and everything will be a complete disaster. Or I'll, you know, and then on the other hand, I'll do, I'll break all the rules, and and just, uh, and just be crazy, and uh, you know, I'll be blessed. On the other hand, I'll do everything crazy, and then I'll be thrown into a pit of hell. On the other time, and then other times, I'll, I'll I'll do everything the way I'm supposed to be doing, and you know, I'll reap some rewards. And it's always changing, so um, I don't feel like I'm in control that much. So that, I mean, I think that there's there's a, there, like, and a, there's a place for me somewhere, you know, in in the art world, 
way if you consider rock music art or what have you uh, I do and uh, you know you just got to roll with the punches and when you you feel like you have some kind of support system spiritually then you're able to get through those hills and valleys and and you know realize the big picture of things is like you know what I mean I'm not really in control whatever whatever happens is the way it's supposed to be what do you think of Christianity uh, I, I think a lot of it is mythos so you uh, don't believe that Jesus Christ is God or no I, I, I personally don't um, I think the theme and of, of of again of having some kind of spirit guide is, is uh, another method of operation in order to get through this life. I mean, I, I think it helps people, uh, but you know, the dogma of the Bible doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, I, I just think uh, you know, it's it's we all know it's been rewritten you know multiple times for political concerns and and uh, the doctrine of it is doesn't really make that much sense to me. Uh, but the, the the overall picture of it is is that yeah, I mean you know it's it, you know it, there's some lessons and, and you know it, it, you know it, it's something to help you pull through hard times and uh, you know that sounds as simple as that sounds. I think that you know if people need that, then that's fine. The blaring out show.